Here's Black Hat. Hey everyone, Black Cat Loner here, and it's been a while since I did a Black Cat Book Club segment. Granted, this one is a redo of an old video from 2016 I found recently where I spotlighted the Stephen King book, Dr. Sleep. The audio wasn't too great on it, and it was also two minutes long, so I figure I'd rewrite the whole thing, especially since there had been more things that have come out pertaining to Dr. Sleep most notably a movie adaptation that was released in 2019. And I've had some other things going on here, which is why I haven't really been able to do a lot on here. But I'm here now, so without further ado, here we go. Like I said, welcome to another installment of the Black Cat Book Club. And for the third installment, we're going to look at another book from the master storyteller himself, Stephen King. And also, like I said, I'm looking at the book Dr. Sleep which is the sequel to the classic novel, The Shining, which in turn inspired a classic movie of its own. Here's Johnny! Now, it's pretty legendary that Stephen King hated the classic Stanley Kubrick movie. To this day, I still haven't seen the original Shining movie, but there wasn't anything that I haven't watched over the years that didn't have a reference to that movie, most notably the clip I just played. But of course, this is not about The Shining. Instead, it is about its sequel, Dr. Sleep. Published in 2013, Dr. Sleep focuses on Danny Torrance, now an adult and a recovering alcoholic who takes a job at a nursing home in New Hampshire, where he uses his shining powers to help provide comfort to nursing patients who are dying, which in turn earns him the nickname Dr. Sleep. Fun fact, King cited the story of Oscar, a cat that resided in a nursing home who could sense that a patient was dying and provided comfort to them in their last days as partial inspiration for the story. While in the nursing home, he encounters a 12-year-old girl named Abra Stone who also possesses the shining powers and he must protect her from a group of immortal nomads known as the True Knot who on the surface look like old people clad in polyester and drive across the country in RVs but they also have psychic abilities which they obtain by torturing children who also have the power of the shining, many of them to death. What ensues is an epic cross-country battle between good and evil. Upon its release, Doctor Sleep received praise from critics and like most other King books was a bestseller. So it was inevitable that a movie adaptation would be announced. However, it wouldn't receive a budget until the success of It Chapter 1 in 2017. By the way, I saw that in theaters. The film would be directed by Mike Flanagan, who directed some Stephen King adaptations, mainly the ones that went to Netflix, and would star Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, Ewan McGregor, as the grown-up Danny Torrance. While the film version was praised for his performance and for the director's risky attempts to do a compromise between King's novel and the Kubrick version. It was criticized for being two and a half hours long and also didn't do so well at the box office. As far as my thoughts on the book goes, once again, King maintained his reputation as one of the most reliable writers of the modern age. Very rarely does he write a book that disappoints and with Dr. Sleep, he does not disappoint. This book is a very compelling, character-driven story that continues the tradition of The Shining, and it was very interesting to see him revisit one of his most iconic characters, and see how his life has been since surviving the events at the Overlook Hotel in the first novel. The supporting characters are also compelling and easier to care about, and the action rarely lets up with each turn of the page. This is clearly a must-read for fans of The Shining, both movie and novel and also recommended for Stephen King constant readers in general. And as a constant reader myself, I highly recommend it. As far as the movie version goes, right now my future as a movie reviewer is kind of iffy due to the times we're in right now and also not having a lot of time to do it. I know I have at least one more Movies to Go episode still in development, 
So if I have enough material, I may do a movies to go on it, but probably not until after the holidays. But until then, thanks for watching. I'm Black Hat Loner, and I will see you next time. Same Black Hat time, same Black Hat channel. Mm hmm.